All right, how about more probability with games? Here's poker. So let's say you're playing Texas Hold'em, and you're looking at this. So your cards are, uh, you got a big slick here, ace, king, spades. And on the board, uh, the flop hits eight, six, and five, two spades, and heart. Uh, there's a couple ways you can win this hand now. Uh, one is everybody misses, uh, which a, in a big table is fairly unlikely, but with a flop like that is possible. Uh, then your ace could be high and win it. Um, <clears throat> but most likely the way you win this hand is by hitting your flush. So one more spade gets you a flush. Uh, we have four right now and we need a fifth. So we have two more cards to hit that flush. Let's see what the probabilities are and how they change. Um, so right now we see five cards. Uh, 52 minus 5 is 47 cards left, 13 of those were spades, 4 of them we see now, so 9 spades left. So 9 of the last 47 cards were spades, and um, we can figure out figure our probabilities from that. Um, so the fourth card could be a spade, so we have 3 on the board. When the fourth card comes, it could be a spade, and the probability of that is just, like we just said, there's 9 out of 47 uh, cards, about 19.15%. Okay. <clears throat> so you'll get a you'll get the card you want 20% of the time almost, uh, or about one fifth of the time. Uh, but if we miss the fourth, um, and we could still hit a spade on the fifth, uh, and so that's uh, this. So if we miss the fourth, there's still nine spades left. Now there's only 46 total. So the probability of hitting the spade on this turn times uh, the probability of missing on the first turn, which is one minus the probability of the first turn. Uh, and so that'll happen about 15.82% of the time, okay? And if you add those two together, uh, it means we'll hit our flush about 35% of the time almost. So a little over a third of the time, we're going to get the card we want, okay? So that's how the probability works out when you're sitting here, uh, when you don't know what either of those cards is going to be. Uh, obviously, the conditional probability after we get the fourth changes, so, you know, <clears throat> if we hit a diamond, then uh, this probability goes to zero, right? Because we're not going to hit on the fourth card. And this probability, you can now ignore that. And now you just have a 9 over 46 um, chance of hitting on the fifth card, which is about 19.5%. Um, so you went from 35% down to 19.5% um, probability if you miss the fourth. Uh, alternatively, on the fourth, uh, you could hit a spade, uh, and now your probability goes to 100%, right? Uh, the other thing we can talk about here is also the probability of hitting on both four and five, so both the fourth and fifth cards could be spades, uh, and that would give us uh, this probability, so nine, out, 9 over 47 on that first one times 8 over 46 on the second one, so about 3.33% of the time we'll hit on both, um, <clears throat> which in this case would be really good and in some cases would be dangerous depending um, uh, when you have uh, suited in the hole. Uh, in this case it would be good because they you almost certainly would have a better flush than anybody else who had a spade in their hand. Um, and so you would you would win and, and you might be able to get them to bet a lot. Um, that 3.33% is actually part of this 19.15%. So we, we did probability of the fourth card hitting um, spade, that is 19.15% uh, of the time, uh, and that includes all the times that you also hit on the fifth. So so we don't have to add that into our total. Uh, if we add that into our total, then we would have to take our 19.15 up here times um, uh, 1 minus, <clears throat> again, uh, uh, or 1 minus 9 over 46, so the, the um, probability of missing on the fifth so that this just becomes hit miss this becomes miss hit and then hit hit uh, and then you'll end up right back here at 34.97 percent so anyway that's some um, joint and conditional probabilities with poker uh, i'll see you on another video